In this video, we'll create a slash bet command for our Discord economy bot. If you're new here, this is part three to our economy Discord bot series. So if you missed the other two videos, I'll have them linked down below. So to get started, we first want to set up a cooldown schema in order to store when the user can run the command again. It should be noted that this cooldown functionality is not limited to the beg command. It can be used with any future commands that you make. So let's get started by creating a new file inside the schemas folder and I'm going to call it cooldown.js. As with our other schema, we're going to start by importing stuff from our mongoose library. The first thing is the schema class and the second thing is the model function. So let's start by creating our cooldown schema. So I'm going to create a variable called cooldown schema and set it to a new instance of the schema class. Now the first property inside is going to be the name of the command. So command name, and this is going to have a type of string and required is going to be true. Next, we need to store the user ID of the person who executed the command. So we're going to store the user ID, which is also going to have a type of string and required to true. Now, if your bot is multi-gilded, meaning you're storing data for your users across multiple servers, then you might also want to create a guild ID property, which will also have the type of string and required set to true. However, I don't need this because my bot is going to be global. So I'm going to move on to the next property. The next property is going to be ends at, and this is going to store the time when this cooldown is going to end. So I'm going to set the type to date, and this is required as well. Finally, let's export the schema as a model. So let's say module.exports and inside the model function, the first argument is going to be the name of the schema, which is cooldown. And the second argument is going to be the schema itself. So cooldown schema. You can save your file and close out of it. And now let's move on to our beg command. So inside the commands folder, inside the economy folder, I'm going to create a new file called beg.js. Now, as with the rest of our commands, I'm going to export an object. This object will have the data property, which is the structure of our command. So I can set the name to beg and description to beg to get some extra balance. Of course, you can set the description to whatever you want. Now, we also need the run function, which is going to be asynchronous. And from this function, we're going to go ahead and destructure the interaction object. For now, let's just go ahead and reply to this interaction by saying you got X amount of balance. So let's save this file and try to start our bot. So open up your terminal and type node index.js. And once your bot is online, it's going to register the command beg. So let's head over to discord and try running slash beg. So over here, it says you got X amount of balance. So our interaction reply is working. Let's now install a library called pretty MS which will format our milliseconds time to a much more human readable format. So I'm going to say npm install pretty ms and hit enter. It's a fairly small library, so it should install pretty quickly. Now, right above this object, we're going to create a function, which is going to generate a random number between X and Y. So I'm going to call this function get random number and the parameters are going to be X and Y, of course. Now to avoid wasting time, you can just copy paste this code right here. It's pretty self-explanatory. It just generates a random number between X and Y. Now let's import our cooldown schema as well as our user profile schema. So I'm going to say const cooldown with a capital C equals require. And then from the schemas folder, I'm going to import cooldown and then I'm going to do the same, but for user profile. Now inside our run function, the first thing that I want to do is check if the command is being executed inside a server. So I'm going to say if not interaction in guild. So basically if the interaction was not executed inside a server, then in this case, we can reply to this interaction by saying await interaction.reply. And then I'm going to pass in the content property, which is going to be, you can only run this command inside a server. I'm also going to pass in the ephemeral property and set this to true, which will make the message dismissible. Finally, also make sure to return from this function so it does not run any further. Now down here, I'm going to add a try catch block. And in case there's any errors, I'll just console log and say error handling slash beg and then pass in the error. Now inside the try block, I'm going to first defer a reply using await interaction dot defer reply. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is define a command name variable. 
and we're going to set this to the name of the command, which is beg. We're going to be using this in order to store the cooldown inside the database. And we also need the user ID. So let's set this to interaction.user.id. Now let's go ahead and fetch a cooldown if it does exist from the database. So let's define cooldown and set this to await cooldown.find1. And then we're going to pass in a query, which is of course our user ID and the name of the command. So command name. Now let's check if the cooldown exists and if it does exist, let's check if its date is more than the current date. So we're going to say if cooldown and date dot now is less than cooldown dot ends at. And basically what this will do is it will first check if the cooldown object exists in the database. If it does, then it's going to compare basically if the cooldown date has not ended. So if that's the case, of course, we're going to reply to the user telling them that they still have some time left. So to do that, what I'm going to do, first of all, is we're going to import a library using the await import statement. And the library name is pretty MS. Now we can't really import this at the top because of some ESM module exports. So what we're going to do is we're going to destructure the default export from here and then rename this to pretty MS. Now let's go ahead and edit our reply. So I'm going to say await interaction dot edit reply. And inside what I'm going to pass is you are on cooldown. Come back after. And to define the time, of course, we're going to pass in the pretty MS function. And inside this, of course, we need the amount in milliseconds. So let's take the cooldown dot ends at minus the date dot now. Now, of course, if this is the case, we also have to return from this function. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to check if the cooldown does not exist. So we're going to say if not cooldown, then we're going to create a new cooldown. So we're going to set our cooldown variable to new cooldown. And then inside, we're going to pass in the user ID as well as the name of the command. So command name. Now, this next step is optional. But what I want is when the user runs the command, there should be a 60% chance that they get something and a 40% chance that they don't get anything. So let's go ahead and define a variable called chance and set this to get random number. And we're going to get a random number between zero and 100. So now we're going to say if chance is less than 40, then what we're going to do is we're going to say await interaction dot edit reply and tell the user you didn't get anything this time. Try again later. Of course, you can personalize the message however you want. And once that is done, what we're going to do is we're going to add the cooldown to the user. So we're going to say cooldown dot ends at equals to date dot now. And then we're going to add 300,000, which is basically five minutes in milliseconds. Of course, you can set this to whatever amount you want, but I think five minutes is pretty fair. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to save this cooldown to the database. So let's say await cooldown dot save and we're going to return from this function. Now the code below this is only going to run if the chance is above 40. So let's go ahead and say const amount. And here we're going to generate a random amount. So we're going to say get random number and we're going to generate an amount from 30 to 150. Again, you can set this to whatever you want. This is just something that I am comfortable with. So once we get an amount, let's go ahead and define our user profile. So we're going to say let user profile. And we're going to fetch a user profile from the database. So let's say await user profile dot find one. And then we're going to find one using the user ID. And from this profile, all we need is the user ID and the balance. So let's add the select method. And we're going to pass in a string with user ID and space, then balance. Now let's check if the user profile exists. So I'm going to say if not user profile. Then in this case, we're going to create a new user profile. So I'm going to say user profile equals to new user profile. And then I'm going to pass in the user ID. OK, so the code down here is going to run once the user profile has been created. So let's say user profile dot balance plus equal to the amount that we generated. And then let's also update the cooldown. So I'm going to say cooldown dot ends at equal to and then I'm going to set it to date dot now plus three hundred thousand just like before. Now, of course, once this is done, we want to save both the user profile as well as the cooldown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say await promise dot all. And then over here, we can pass in an array. And the first element is going to be cooldown dot save. And then the second one is going to be user profile dot save. 
So once both of these are done running, we can edit our reply. So I'm going to say await interaction dot edit reply. And over here, I'm going to say you got amount. And then I'm going to add a new line and show the user their new balance. So I'm going to say new balance. And then I'm going to pass in user profile dot balance. So that's pretty much all for our beg command. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's restart our bot using node index.js. And back in Discord, we can try to run the command once again. This time it's going to say you got 34 and my new balance is 34. If I try to run the command again, it's going to say you're on cooldown, come back after 4 minute 51 seconds. However, now that the cooldown has been created, it's not actually going to get deleted. So what I want to do is I want to create an interval that runs every, let's say, 30 minutes or every hour. And on every iteration, what it's going to do is it's going to fetch the data from the database and it's going to check if the time has already passed. If it has, then it's going to delete that data from the database. It's pretty easy to implement this and I want this function to start as soon as the bot starts up. So let's go inside our events folder and inside the ready folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this clear cooldowns.js. As usual, this exports a function. However, we don't really need the client object from the parameters. So we're just going to leave that as it is. Let's also import the cooldown schema from the schemas folder. So inside this function, I'm going to create a set interval, which will run every hour. So this is the milliseconds for one hour. And this function is going to be asynchronous. So inside this set interval, I'm going to have a try catch block. And inside the catch, I'm just going to console log and say error clearing cooldowns. And then I'm going to pass in the error. Inside the try block, what we're going to first do is we're going to go ahead and fetch all the cooldowns. So I'm going to say const cooldowns equals to await cooldown dot find. And of course, we only really need the ends at property. So I'm going to say select and pass in ends at. Okay, so we now have an array of cooldowns. So I'm going to say for const cooldown of cooldowns. And for each cooldown, we're going to go ahead and compare the current date with the dates that was stored in the database. So I'm going to say if date dot now is less than cooldown dot ends at. In this case, we don't really have to delete the data because the cooldown still hasn't expired. So I'm going to say return. However, the code below this is only supposed to run if the cooldown has expired. So I'm going to say await cooldown dot delete one. And then I'm going to pass the ID using underscore ID, which is the document ID in MongoDB. And I'm going to set this to cooldown underscore ID. So this is pretty much it. So I'm going to save my file and every hour this function will run and check for any expired cooldowns. Anyway, if you guys are having any problems, then be sure to join my Discord server, which will be linked down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.